My name's Neil Woodall. Um, I'm an Intaglio printmaker. I've been printing for about 30 years now. I, saw, I used to live in London and I saw some exhibitions of uh, Otto Dix and Goya and I just thought they were just fantastic. I had to find out how, how people did this and eventually I ended up going to um, Central School of Art in London. Uh, started doing night classes just to, to learn etching and then ended up doing doing a postgraduate course in printing there and I've, I've stayed with it ever since. I've, I've been working on this plate for about two or three weeks now and I've, um, I've decided it's a good time to check exactly where I am and so I'm taking a proof of this and then I'll, I'll do a little bit more work on it later. It's like this process that you can keep repeating until you're actually happy with the, the end product. Right, the reason I'm taking a proof is, is so that I can see how grey the greys are and if I actually got to blacks yet, if, do I need to put a whole new aquatint on and a, and a new layer of tones on? Um, you can see so much by looking at a plate but you can't tell everything, so you do have to take a proof. So I'm just, just going to roll ink all over the plate, everywhere. And then, get some book binders canvas and push the ink into the plate. So that's that, the ink's all gone, gone into the grooves of the aquatint and so pressed down. So then I'm going to get slightly cleaner cloth and start to polish the plate up. So, as the ink's lifting off, the image slowly comes through. It's quite physically hard work, this. So I know which areas are lighter, so I can put more pressure on and just try and just bring the, the light into the plate. So... The tissue takes takes the last layer of, um, I don't know if you can see, but like the the ink's not evenly taken off. There's quite a lot of ink left on around there and at the bottom, but quite bright at the top. You can bring the ink to the surface with a nice cloth, and this is called retroussage. And you just put the weight of the cloth on the plate and it just brings the blacks even evenly and nice to the surface. I've beveled the edges and, and um, I've filed them and then I've burnished the edges down in a bevel and so I can clean them with a cloth. And that's the uh, plate ready to print. Quite, quite a bit of pressure on this. And... That's the plate. This has now got a bit of form in it. I'm quite pleased with that. To work on a plate you need to be perfectly degreased so I use ammonia and whiting which is basically talcum powder and I uh, make a paste and that cuts all through all the grease because grease acts as um, a resist to acid so I don't want any grease on the plate when I start it leaves the plate really clean. So now I can start work on it. It's 
So to, to rework this, this etching plate, do some more, I need to expose just the areas of copper that I'm, that I'm interested in etching. And to do that, I'm going to show, show a way of working positive so that I can paint the areas I want to etch. So what I've done, I've, I've covered the extra bit of work that I need to do. I've painted either in oil paint or Litho crayon, just these black marks. Now, if I've gone over this wing, this bird's wing here, and but it doesn't matter. And some of these marks here are a bit ugly at the bottom, but I'm going to sort all those out later. So, the next thing is to cover with um, straw heart varnish. It's um, it's brilliant stuff because it's um, alcohol based. So I can pour this on and just let it cover the whole plate and. So the whole plate's covered. To be very careful not to smudge this too much. There we go. Let that dry off. So this is it's got oil paint on that's covered with straw hat varnish. I've put on a bit of white spirit and I'm going to rub the plate gently. I might end up scrubbing it actually. And wherever there's been oil paint, the white spirit lifts the lifts the straw hat varnish off. So some of the work was a bit delicate, so I'm gonna just break the surface. So now all my marks that I drew in oil paint and Litho crane have lifted and everywhere else is covered with an acid resist. So everywhere I've drawn, I can, I can see copper. So that means I've been working positive and I can actually etch this after I put an aqua tint on. So this is um, it's an aqua tint box. It's absolutely full of resin dust, the sort of dust that you put onto a violin bow. I've got a, there's a paddle show you there's a paddle inside here i don't know if you can see it i'm going to spin this and make the dust go up into the air so this is so so the dust is going up into the air at the moment then i Put my etching plate, hold my breath. Put my etching plate into there and we we'll leave it for five minutes. Really important not to overheat it. <laughs> so I've just cleaned it off so that there we go. I want the acid to bite more at the bottom than the top. Now I've got my stronger acid here, I'm just gonna the acid bites, those little dots, the acid bites between, between them. You can't really see them, they're so fine. But it gives, what happens is it gives, it etches the plate and gives it a key for when you're actually um, inking it up and printing. See where it's bitten different amounts. That should be much darker than that bit. I'm now going to put methylated spirits over everything and that will take everything off and we should reveal what's been etched.
there's so many variables it's you you can just you can tell by looking at it whether it's overbitten or not you can tell if it's a black or a you know a dark gray but the exact tone you just hope for the the best really well i do because <laughs> test strips never work because temperature varies and the aqua tint the amount of aqua tint that's on varies but you're always you're always in the same area so All the time you're making decisions about, I mean, very subtle decisions about how the print's going to turn out. That's that's the best advantage of etching. You, the actual printing counts. The paper I use is um, Somerset paper. It's it's 100% cotton rag. It's acid free, and it'll last forever. It's uh, the same sort of um, paper that um, Rembrandt used to use. Um, what I have to do, I have to cut the paper to size, soak it for half an hour and leave it overnight to really soften. Then I blot the paper to get rid of most of the moisture, but just leave it nicely damp. And that way, when I start to print, I put it onto the plate and it picks up every little detail on the plate. There we go. That's all right, yeah. I'm happy with the idea of the way that, they, that I've gone from just a, a bit of sunlight hitting a tree in a forest to actually something that I don't really know what it's about anymore, which I'm quite, I'm quite pleased I've got to that state. There's, um, it's got a nice atmosphere about it. I've got some of the soft floating areas that I've always wanted to create, so I'm glad I did the plate again and, I'm, I'm, and with a clear, clear image of what I was aiming for. Rather than fighting to try and get an image to come from nothing, I actually had arrived at it but messed it up so it was really great to start again and I've never done that before. Start again and redo the image. <laughs>